So as you know that MOS transistor is a four terminal device basically. Okay, so if you draw the structure, just uh, take a look. If you forgot that. So we have a gate terminal here. This is called the substrate or body. And in the left side and right side, we have source and drain conduct. This is, you can say source. And this one is a drain. Okay, so this is the structure of a simple uh, MOS transistor, so it is a four terminal device. And in this part, the middle part, means uh, we are talking about this one. Mm. This one, that means uh, the first layer is a metal layer. This is a metal, then this is the oxide, and the bottom one is a semiconductor. Okay, the substrate basically. Okay, the MOS stands for metal oxide semiconductor. So that came, the definition came from the structure of this layer. Okay, so metal, we have a metal layer. Okay, then there is oxide layer. Then we have a semiconductor. So this is a metal layer is there, followed by one oxide layer, and this is a semiconductor region. Okay, so that's why the name is MOS, metal oxide semiconductor. So if you carefully observe this structure, this region, so it is nothing but a parallel plate capacitor. The state, the metal side behaves like one electrode, the semiconductor side behaves like another one, means plate. Okay, the metal side, uh, that part behaves like one plate, charge plate, this one. Okay, where the gate is connected, and the bottom one is a semiconductor side where the substrate is there. So this is gate and this is the substrate or body. Okay, body or substrate. And in between two plate, there is a dielectric layer. So this is oxide. Okay, so in between two plate, there is a dielectric layer that is called oxide. So it behaves like a parallel plate capacitor. Okay. And this structure, this metal oxide semiconductor means without the source and drain, Sometimes it is denoted as MOS cap. MOS capacitor. MOS cap. So MOS cap is basically a two terminal MOS structure without source and drain contact. Okay. And um, from fabrication point of view, uh, this structure, okay, this is called the gate stack. Gate stack. That means the gate region, the gate metal, followed by oxide, and the bottom one, the semiconductor. Okay. So this total region is actually termed as gate stack. Okay. Now remember, this gate stack is the heart of any MOS transistor. Okay, it is the main heart of any MOS transistor. This this region, this metal oxide semiconductor, this gate stack or the MOS cap basically, it is the heart of any MOS plate. So total operation of MOS plate, that is the controlling mechanism mainly. Okay. Of course, there is a role of source and drain. But the controlling mechanism, how we can control the current that depends upon the operation of this region, this MOS cap. Okay. So first, we have to study the structure of this one, the operation of this. We have to explore the two terminal MOS structure, how it works. So when we are applying a different types of voltage at the gate region with respect to the body, okay, then how that profile, how the potential profile will change, how the energy band diagram okay, will change, and um, why we are saying that this section is important and why we are saying this is the heart of a MOS transistor. So let us see. Any question from your side? Okay. So is it clear, any doubt? So this is no the doubt. zero bias quantity. Of course, zero bias. We are not applying any voltage till now. Later, we will apply voltage and we will check what will happen. Okay. So, so, so now uh, we are exploring this part only. The metal semiconductor, metal oxide semiconductor, that is two terminal MOS structure. Okay. So this is a part of MOS transistor. So the first thing is how to draw the band diagram of this structure. Okay, so Because uh, to analyze any uh, portion of any device, it's better to analyze that using 
the energy band diagram point of view. Okay, so first we have to draw the energy band diagram of this uh, MOSCAP, okay, the metal oxide semiconductor region. So we have three region. So first one is the metal. Then we have oxide. Then we have semiconductor. And the semiconductor is P-type doped. So we are talking about NMOS, N-channel MOSFET. And for N-channel MOSFET, you know that the semiconductor is P-type doped. The substrate is P-type. Okay. So P semiconductor, let P silicon. Okay. So if I want to draw the energy band diagram, you know that the first step, whenever you are going to uh, draw an energy band diagram of any system, any uh, two different region, two distinct region, the first step is to draw uh, the individual diagram. So first we have to draw the individual band diagram. See metal, so metal you know that the conduction band, balance band and Fermi level, they are in overlap state. Okay. So the metal we can uh, represent it by using a single line uh, because the conduction band, balance band and Fermi level, they are in overlap state. That EFM is the Fermi level for metal. Okay. Next, oxide. In case of oxide, you know that the oxide is a, it's a directory and it is having a very high band gap. So for oxide, we can say the position of conduction band somewhat here. The position of valence band is here, right? for example. So can you tell me what will be the position of Fermi level for oxide? What will be the position of Fermi level for oxide? Oxide will act as insulator. Yes, insulator. So where the Fermi level will come? So EB. No. EB. Right. Correct. EB. So Fermi level for oxide is in overlap with this because for oxide you know there is no free electron. All electrons are inside the covalent bond. Okay. So valence band is completely filled. And the conduction band is completely empty. So you know the Fermi level, uh, basically that indicates the probability of occupancy, that is 0.5. So for oxide region, the Fermi level is uh, with the uh, valence band, is overlapped with the valence band here. Okay. Now the semiconductor. Semiconductor, you know, there is a finite band gap is there, that is Vc. And of course, the band gap value will be less than oxide Ev. And uh, this is the intrinsic level, that is the Fermi level for intrinsic semiconductor. Since we are talking about P-type semiconductor, you know that Fermi level will be near valence band. EF, S, that is the Fermi level of semiconductor. So those are individual diagram, individual band diagram. So apart from that, I can uh, draw uh, one line here. So later I'm drawing one constant line at the top, I'll tell you what is this. This is called E0. So E0 is called the free space energy level. It is called free space energy level or vacuum level. That means if you can transfer electron uh, that above E0 or E0 or above E0, that electron became free. Okay. So this is the situation. This is the individual band diagram for three different region. We have three region. This is this the metal top one. Then we have an insulator layer that is uh, oxide. And at the bottom, we have a P-type group semiconductor. Okay. And from our previous topic, that is uh, when we discussed the metal semiconductor junction, we are already familiar with the term warp function. Okay, so can you tell me what is the definition of warp function? Again, I am asking the same question. What is the definition? Ah, tell me. The energy required to bring a, an electron from Fermi level to free space. Yeah, very good. So the energy, minimum amount of energy required to transfer electron from Fermi level to free space. So for metal side, so we can say E phi AM. So this is the work function for metal side. Okay. 
and for semiconductor side similarly you can uh, draw the line from fermi level to free space this is called e phi s okay semiconductor side work function apart from work function there is another one term that is called electron affinity so the electron affinity is basically uh, it is that energy level uh, that is the distance between conduction band and e0 okay that means if you want to transfer electron from conduction band to e0 back one so that is called electron affinity so electron affinity that means uh, we can say this one is the electron affinity is i it is denoted by the sign j this one is the electron affinity is j and for metal see what function and electron affinity they are same because conduction band valence band and fermi level they are in overlap state so for metal electron affinity and conduction uh, work function they are same uh, we are using the term work function for metal not electron affinity Okay. And you know that the concept of band gap, the distance between uh, conduction band and valence band. So this is the band gap of oxide. This is the band gap of semiconductor. Uh, oh, sorry, this one. So assuming this is a silicon, if I assume the semiconductor is silicon, this EG value around 1.1 electron volt. And the oxide is typically 6 to 7 electron volt. Let I am taking 6.0 electron volt. The value of Eg for oxide is quite large band gap. Okay, this. So this is the situation where we got, we have plotted uh, three individual uh, band diagram okay, for metal, oxide, and semiconductor region. Okay. And if we consider the metal is aluminium, okay, so then this uh, distance is basically around uh, 4.1 electron volt the value of work function for aluminium is around 4.1 electron volt okay and for this uh, silicon this uh, is around 4.15 electron volt it looks smaller in the diagram but uh, it, it should be larger it's 4.15 electron volt. okay this so now to get the equivalent means uh, energy band diagram because the, the three systems are connected together metal oxide and semiconductor so three systems actually they are connected together okay so so we have to draw the equivalent energy band diagram okay now so you know the rule uh, that equivalent energy band diagram how to draw it the so first thing is we have to take a common line. This one. This is the metal side Fermi level. This is the semiconductor side some Fermi level. And the Fermi level is constant throughout the system because when you are going to connect all three region to achieve equilibrium, the Fermi level for each region, they must be aligned. Okay. Then with respect to Fermi level, we shall uh, draw and the position of uh, all other energy lines. So it is metal, this is oxide, and this is p-type semiconductor. So the process is same, just like you before uh, when we draw the energy band diagram for heterojunction, when we draw the band diagram for p-n junction, metal semiconductor junction, etc. So the process is same. Now for metal side, you know the Fermi level conduction and balance band, they are connected together. Okay, so this, so no need to separately uh, draw that conduction band and balance band because they are inside this. For oxide region, just check the diagram. Oxide region, Fermi level is here and conduction band is above uh, six electron volt. Okay, so the position of, if this is the position of Fermi level, so conduction band position will be somewhat here. This. Okay. Then coming to the semiconductor side, just check. This Fermi level is near valence band. So we have drawn the Fermi level here. So valence band will be somewhat here. EV. 
So if this is EV, the position of conduction line will be here, so approximately here. PC. Okay. So any doubt up to this point? So why I am drawing those lines in this way? Okay. Any query from your side? Fine. So this is okay, but uh, till now it is not complete. Okay, because I'm not uh, okay joining those lines. Okay, we have to join. Uh, this is the metal side conduction band is here, oxide side conduction band is here, and semiconductor side is here. We have to join it. But how I will join? Whether I will join it like this as uh, straight line, or uh, is there any type of bending? So we have to take care about that. Because you know when we are going to join uh, two different region, in case of metal semiconductor junction, we have seen that there are different types of bending takes place, upward bending, sometimes downward bending. Okay. So now in this case also, we have to check if there are any uh, probability, if there, if there are any chances of bending of energy band diagram. So can you check that? If there are any bending? So first step, why bending takes place? The bending of band diagram takes place if um, some of the electron transferred from one region to another one region, then there is chances of bending. Okay. Now check this structure. In this structure, C, the position of conduction band or semiconductor side is here. Okay. Position of conduction band for metal side is here. So we can say the semiconductor side, the electrons are at higher energy level because see the position of conduction band is here. So the three electrons are staying here. Okay. If they are they are at higher energy level. Whereas for metal side, okay, the electrons are at lower energy level, they are here. Okay. So to achieve equilibrium, then what will happen? The electrons will try to move from semiconductor region to metal region. Okay, I should not draw it in this way. Okay, they will try to move semiconductor region to metal region, this. But see, in between two region, there is oxide layer. In between two region, there is oxide layer. So if you want to transfer electron, the first thing is that you have to overcome this barrier. So this much amount of barrier is present now. So first we have to overcome this barrier, okay. So electron want to transfer, want to move from semiconductor to metal side, but it is facing some barrier because the oxide is present. So ultimately they cannot move. They cannot move to the metal side. Just to see the situation is same as your metal semiconductor junction. When we connect metal with the semiconductor, in some cases that electron moves from semiconductor to metal side or some cases electron is moving from metal to semiconductor side. And depending upon that, we have upward bending and downward bending. Okay. Similarly, in this case, the electron is trying to move from semiconductor towards metal to achieve equilibrium because here electrons are at higher energy level. Conduction man is at higher position. Here conduction man is at lower position. But they cannot move because there is a barrier. Okay, that is uh, the oxide due to this oxide region, there is a barrier. So they cannot move. So they cannot move, but they are deposited some of the electrons. Okay, they are deposited near this oxide semiconductor interface. Okay, they are trying to move, but they cannot cross the barrier. Okay, so some of the electrons are deposited. Okay, they are small in nature because see, we have a p type semiconductor, electrons are minority carrier. Only few electrons are present, they are minority carrier. Okay, so some of the electrons are deposited near this interface. So this interface means oxide semiconductor interface. So some of the electrons are deposited here. Now, can you tell me when some of the electrons are deposited here, what will happen to the band diagram? What will happen to this band diagram? We have a little bit more electron in this oxide semiconductor interface. Then which type of bending we can expect? Which type of bending we can expect? Anyone? Down, downward. Good, downward bending. Because see, the interface became slightly more n type. And for n type semiconductor, you know, the distance between conduction band and Fermi level will reduce. For n type semiconductor, the distance between 
conduction band and Fermi level reduce. See, here the distance between conduction band and Fermi level is this from this point to this point because it is P type semiconductor. Distance is large, but the interface becomes slightly n type. So that means this distance should reduce. Okay, that means there will be a little bit downward bend, little bit because only few electrons are there. So as a result, a valence band will also bend. And if I draw the intrinsic level EI is exactly at the mid position, it will also bend like this. Okay. So what I'm saying that uh, since few electrons are deposited here, so this interface becomes slightly more negative. Okay. So as a result, there will be a little bit downward bending. Okay. So a little bit downward bending will be there. And to, re to reflect this, again, the same thing, that means uh, another way we can say there is a potential drop, there is a voltage drop appears across this oxide layer. So if we consider this is the oxide layer, okay, this is the oxide layer from this to this region. So there is a voltage drop takes place, okay, due to this. The voltage drop occurs due to the work function difference, okay, see, due to the mismatch of energy lines. Due to the mismatch of energy lines, because see here Fermi level is at this position, and uh, conduction band and Fermi level at this position, metal side, whereas for semiconductor side, the conduction band is at this position. So due to this mismatch in the energy level, a built-in voltage drop takes place. Okay, and few electrons are present near the interface, and a little bit downward bending is observed. Okay, and Due to this, the oxide region, okay, the conduction band of oxide region also, it will bend the downward direction. Okay. So why it will bend in the downward? So if this is minus, so alternate in the other way, we can say with respect to this semiconductor, this side appears like little bit positive. I'm not saying that a positive charges are deposited. So if this became a little bit minus, since it is a capacitor structure, okay, so we can say uh, this uh, the other side of this um, metal oxide semiconductor structure gets like little bit plus. So because it is a capacitor, when one side is at minus, so we can expect some opposite charge at the output. Okay, next side. So as a result, what will happen? That uh, oxide layer conduction band will also bend. Okay, see here due to the presence of positive, okay, positive charges, what will happen? Here, the energy will reduce okay. because you know uh, the electrons are negatively charged. If you add a negative voltage, the energy will increase. But here, okay, we have a positive, okay, we have some positive charge here in this region, okay. As a result, the energy value will reduce. The actual energy value is this one, but it will reduce gradually due to this voltage drop, okay. So ultimately, the diagram we are getting is something like this. Okay, it's something like this. So there is a downward bending. There is a downward bending. Okay, due to this mismatch of this energy level. Okay, so technically we can write the bending in band diagram. That is due to work function difference between metal and semiconductor side. Okay, that means from this uh, structure, we can say. Whatever the bending takes place, that is the mismatch of work function. Here we have E5M, here we have E5S. Okay, due to this work function difference, this type of bending will take place. Okay. So this diagram, just I'm giving the name. This is the equivalent uh, the energy band diagram. Uh, zero bias because I am not applying any voltage. Okay, energy band diagram at zero bias. So this is the situation, a small downward bending we got. And the bending, who is responsible for this bending? The work function difference between metal and semiconductor side. 
Now let us see how much work function difference is there if I want to calculate. How much work function difference, so how we can calculate them mathematically. Work function difference, if I want to calculate, that is, I can write phi ms, that is metal side work function minus semiconductor side work function. Phi r phi m equal to metal or gate work function and phi s plus two semiconductor work function okay so we have to calculate this parameter phi ms now check okay let's uh, consider uh, one example a problem statement okay that uh, aluminium having Phi m of 4.1 electron volt. Okay. Then semiconductor, that means the aluminium, the gate region. If I have a problem like this, gate region is aluminium having what function of 4.1 electron volt. Okay. Then we have the semiconductor is P type or acceptor type doped. with density n a let 10 to the power 16 per cubic centimeter okay assume okay electron affinity of silicon let we are assuming uh, the semiconductor is silicon that the electron affinity of silicon is xi equal to 4.15 electron volt okay 4.15 electron volt then calculate work function difference between metal and substrate that means metal and semiconductor so we have a problem like this so how to calculate so phi m is directly given phi m equal to 4.1 electron volt so nothing to uh, do it okay now the problem is the, uh, with phi s yes, semiconductor side work function that means this one this value is given this to this value is given that is 4.15 electron volt okay so now check this this total distance equal to this distance this to this plus this to this plus this to this so can you calculate this so what will be the value of phi s how to calculate this much is 4.15 so we can write phi is equal to 4.15 plus this to this how much anyone ec2 ei ec2 ei one 1.1 is total check ec2 ev is 1.1 band gap half of that i yeah, is at a half position na, mid position okay. so it is half of that that is 1.1 by 2 plus pi to ef ei to ef i don't know whether you can remember it or not so this is a term that's phi f for me potential okay so when we discuss that pn junction the barrier potential calculation we calculate the VBI, phi FN, phi FP. Okay, so this is phi F. Okay. So plus phi F. So what is the formula to calculate phi F? Anyone?
it is kt by q ln na by ni okay the formula to calculate phi a that is kt by q ln na by ni and assuming we are working with the room temperature t equal to 300 k this kt by q value will be 0 0.0259 ln na value that is given 10 to the power 16 by ni value Ni value for silicon, it is 1.45 or 1.5 into 10 to the power 10. Can you calculate this? It will be around 0 0.35 electron volt. Check it. It will be 0 0.35 electron volt. Just verify. So if I put this value here, that means uh, if I write it in a more general way, phi s will be equal to E j of silicon, that is the electron affinity of silicon, plus half of the band gap E g by 2 plus phi f. That is 4.15 plus 0 0.55 plus sorry, 0 0.35. Okay. Equals to how much we are getting? 5.05 electron volt. Okay. Actually, it should be E phi m because we are working with the energy E phi m. Okay. 5.05 electron volt. So you can calculate, you can check this derivation. So the Difference, what function difference? So that is phi ms, that is phi m minus phi s, that is equal to phi m check. We have phi m equal to 4.1 minus phi s, we are getting 5.05. 5.05. So, so this one we are getting how much? 0 0.95. Okay, electron volt minus, of course. So minus 0 0.95 electron volt. So this is the work function difference between metal and semiconductor, right? So why we are going to calculate this? So can we say that if I apply this amount of voltage externally, suppose C, the bending of energy band takes place due to this value, okay, 0.95 electron volt. The distance between, uh, the, the difference between the metal and semiconductor side work function, that is 0.95 minus 0.95 electron volt. So if I apply this amount of voltage between metal and semiconductor, okay, externally, then check, the energy band will bend in the opposite direction. The energy band will bend in the opposite direction. That means what I am saying, if I apply uh, that uh, this amount of same amount of voltage at the semiconductor side with respect to metal side, then what will happen? Okay, the energy band will bend in the opposite direction. Okay. That means, uh, see, if I apply this, this amount of voltage, a negative voltage if I apply in the p-type semiconductor, then check. Again, whatever the bending, in the downward bending, if I apply a negative voltage, again the bending will be in the upward direction. Now check, here the electron energy reduces, okay, and we have a, a little bit downward bending due to this, okay, due to this type of uh, this, okay, this potential drop. So if I apply externally this amount of voltage, so we can compensate the bending. That means whatever the bending happens due to this, then in that, con in that case,
the energy band diagram will be absolutely flat like this. Make sure that you are, you are applying this amount of voltage. So again, it will be at the flat position. Okay, like this. Make sure that you are applying this much amount of voltage that is minus 0 0.95 electron. So another one name of this one is called the flat band voltage. Flat band voltage. It is one important term in case of MOS transistor analysis. So the amount of voltage, okay, externally applied between that gate. This is the gate region, you know, and this is the substrate region. The amount of voltage externally applied, applied between the gate and substrate to compensate the bending of energy band. That means to make the energy band diagram flat, which is called flat band voltage. So the phi m is also denoted as T F B, that is flat band voltage. Okay, so it is called flat band voltage. So this is one important conclusion we got from the zero bias energy band diagram. The bending takes place and if I want to compensate the bending, if I want to make the band diagram flat, we have to apply that amount of voltage externally between the gate and the substrate region. In, in our case, that is 0.95 volt. Okay then the band diagram will be flat. It is called flat band voltage. Okay. This is the first case. Now we are going to apply different voltage. Okay. So this is, uh, till now we are not applying any voltage. We got this type of diagram, the white color. Okay. And this one is at flat band condition. At flat band condition. Now we are going to apply a voltage. So we can write one title that the MOS system under external bias. MOS system under external bias. That means now we are going to apply a voltage. So again, I'm drawing the structure. Let us see. So this is the gate. I'm not writing metal. I'm writing the general, the gate region. This is the oxide region. And this is the p-type silicon. Assuming that our semiconductor is silicon. Okay. The gate terminal. And this is the substrate terminal. So this is the structure of two terminal. MOSFET, my MOS cap. Okay. So case one. So we are applying some gate voltage here. Okay. So later we are applying some gate voltage VG and we make the substrate is grounded. Okay. At the gate terminal, we are applying some gate voltage, which is VG, and substrate terminal is grounded. Case one, VG less than zero that is a negative voltage. Okay, a negative voltage. Let us see what will happen. So when you are applying a negative voltage here, okay, we can also define this thing. So I am saying that if I apply this amount of voltage externally, the band will be flat. I will define why the band will be flat. Let us see. Again, we shall check it here. So we are applying a negative voltage here. Okay, at the gate terminal. So what will happen here? Anyone? You are applying a negative voltage at one plate of a parallel field capacitor. Then what will happen to the next plate, other plate? But it will become positively charged uh, the another plate and uh, electrons will be, it will be positively charged if we consider simple capacitor but yes, since yes. we are dealing with semiconductor just change yeah. the we have a p-type semiconductor yes the we have a p-type semiconductor then 
the majority carrier that is holes okay the holes will be attracted towards the thing so the majority carrier holes will be attracted towards the thing okay so there there will be layer of hole the holes will be deposited here okay near this oxide semiconductor interface at this interface okay so this is the case one So this this one is the case one when we are applying a negative voltage which is uh, less than zero. So due to this uh, negative surface voltage, what will happen? The majority carriers present in the p-type silicon, the substrate, they those holes will be attracted towards this oxide semiconductor interface, and and near this interface, the hole density will be a little bit higher. Okay. Hole density will be little bit higher. Now again, go back to our diagram. If the hole density in this region little bit higher, then we can say this region okay behaves like more p-type. Let's see because the interface in the interface region there is more holes. The holes are deposited near the interface, so we can say the interface became the semiconductor in that region. Became more p-type compared to other part. Okay, so if I write it point-wise, when Vg is negative, then what will happen? The majority carriers that is holes are attracted and deposited. Where they will deposit? Near oxide silicon interface okay so then we can write that the hole density near interface became higher compared to other compared to other part of semiconductor okay so if it happens then can you tell me which type of bending or band diagram will take place now you are familiar with uh, bending can you tell me which type of bending will take place if the uh, interface became more p type because the hole density is more <clears throat> so because the interface became more p-type so uh, since our fermi level is constant just go back to the diagram since our fermi level is constant interface became more p-type or more p-type what will happen valence band will be closer to fermi level okay the so valence band will closer to fermi level that means now this band uh, will be a little bit upward bending like this okay uh, upward bending will be there now i think it is clear why we have to apply minus 0.95 electron volt Check. We already have an inert demand diagram where downward bending is present at zero bias condition. We are not applying any voltage. Okay. So to make it straight, to make it straight, which type of voltage we have to apply in the metal side? Negative voltage. Okay. So slightly, slightly, this bend will bend. This band will bend in the upward direction. Okay. And if you apply more negative voltage, what will happen? From the straight line, again the band will bend in the upward. So if I draw the diagram separately here, uh, diagram would be like this. Okay, just see. Uh, let this is the semiconductor side family label EFS. Okay, so valence band will bend like this. EB, the conduction band will bend like this. You see. And the intrinsic level will also bend like this. Yeah. Okay. And at zero bias, so this is the gate. This is the p-type silicon, and this is the oxide. Okay. So since this side became more positive, so here also the oxide region band will bend because this side is more positive. 
okay the silicon side okay the oxide region will also be oh sorry 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 just a minute mistake okay this side is more positive okay so that means what will happen that energy of electron in this side in the oxide region it will be less okay this because this side became you are applying negative voltage here this side that energy is higher this side of course it will be positive type due to the presence of holes okay so here the oxide region the band will be like this and now you are applying some negative voltage you are applying some negative voltage at the gate region what will happen the metal side fermi level previously it was here efm but now the metal side fermi level you are applying a negative voltage here the metal side fermi level will increase okay now the shifted position of metal side fermi level will be here okay and this is nothing but q times of vg okay how much amount of gate voltage you are applying the metal side fermi level will increase by that amount q times of vg with respect to semiconductor side okay so this is the situation when you are applying a gate voltage which is negative we have a layer of hole near the oxide semiconductor interface as a result the junction became slightly more precise and the upward bending is there okay upward bending is there and oxide region will also bend like this and the layer of electron sorry the layer of hole the deposited the holes will create a layer the deposited free holes will create a layer called accumulation layer okay so the name of the layer called accumulation layer okay note this accumulation layer. so in general this case one is termed as accumulation the case one is termed as accumulation where we are applying a negative gate voltage which is less than zero okay so this is the accumulation region of operation now coming to the next part So mute your microphone. Why this coming? Case two. So the same topic. The MOS system under external bias So now we have case two. Well, Vg greater than zero, but small value. So we are applying a gate voltage which is not negative, which is positive, but a very small value. Okay, just uh, greater than zero. Then what will happen? Let's go back to the structure once again. This is the gate. This is the substrate. The gate metal actually, and this is the oxide. And this is the p-type silicon. Substrate grounded. We are applying a gate voltage Vg, which is greater than zero, but small. Can you tell me what will happen then? Anyone? First of all, when you are applying a great voltage here, some positive charges here, okay. But it, remember, it is very small. So, first thing it will happen is the p-type semiconductor majority carriers are holes. All hole and they are uniformly distributed throughout this whole region, this total semiconductor region. Some free holes are there. The first thing will happen that the holes those are present near this interface means this interface. Okay. See, we are applying a positive charge, so similar type of charge will repel each other. So due to this positive potential, surface potential, what will happen? 
those holes will be repelled back. Okay, those holes will be repelled back. Those holes, those are present near the interface, they will be repelled back deeper, much deeper into the substrate side. So when the holes are repelled back into the substrate, what will happen to this interface? When holes are repelled back into the substrate, when holes are moving, okay, then what will happen to that particular region? Consider PN junction. When holes are moving from P to N side due to diffusion, what will happen in P side? Depletion there will be depletion there will be created. The same thing will happen here. So when holes are moving from the interface, this is the interface region into the substrate region, then we have a depletion. In this region, we have a depletion. In this region, we have a depletion. And you know the depletion charges will be negative. They will lift some negative ions. Okay. So when holes are moving, they lift some negative ions. Okay. So we can write it. So when a small positive gate voltage is applied due to positive surface potential. Okay, or we can say due to the presence of electric field because the electric field will be in that direction from positive towards negative. Okay, holes are rippled back into the substrate and the left fixed negative ions okay which creates which creates the depletion layer, which creates the depletion layer. So when holes are rippled back into the substrate, they left some negative ions. So here we can say the depletion layer is created. A depletion layer is created. Okay. So we can calculate the thickness of depletion layer Okay, so there is a process we can calculate the thickness of depletion layer by applying Poisson's equation similar to the PN junction. Also, we can calculate how much depletion charges are there. Okay, but uh, uh, in this discussion, it is mainly theoretical discussion. We are not going to derive it. Just uh, remember the amount of depletion charge. in depletion layer, okay, so that is let Q be zero, that is minus root of P, the charges are negative actually, that's why the negative sign, minus of two Q in a epsilon of silicon, phi S minus of phi F. So I will tell you what is phi S and what is phi F, okay. So by using this equation, we can calculate how much amount of depletion charges are there. Okay, and basically we can calculate it by using the Poisson's equation. That is d to phi by dx square equal to q n a by epsilon. From there, you know that uh, by integrating that, okay, so we will get the potential profile. Okay, and from potential we can calculate what is the depletion charge. Okay, this. So we are not going for that derivation if you are interested. So later I will discuss that. Okay. Yes. The phi is in this uh, equation. Okay, so I'll discuss this one. So before that, let's draw the band diagram. So what will be the shape of the band diagram? Now we have uh, that holes are equal back into the substrate and some depletion layer is present, which is negative. So can you tell me what will be the change in that diagram? Previously it was something like this. Now, what will be the change? 
so it will bend downwards because the uh, such little bit of um, uh, negative charges are present near the oxide this oxide semiconductor interface so this interface become less p type or little bit more n type this interface become less p type or little bit more n type so less p type means you know this distance uh, which was smaller again it will increase so it will be little bit downward so if i draw the diagram here Sir, little bit down uh, because of the minority carriers are there. Minority carriers still they are not there. Minority carrier will come in a case three when you are applying a gate voltage which is large, but we are not applying sufficiently large gate voltage. That's why I mentioned it is small. Yes. Little bit downward will be there due to presence of the negative ions. They are not minority carrier. They are depletion. Yes, negative ions. Negative ions. Negative ions. Okay. So if I draw the Venn diagram here in a small scale, okay. So the valence, this is EFS. So the valence band will be something like this. It will bend little bit downward. Conduction band will bend like this, little bit downward. And as a result, the intrinsic level will also bend like this. So EC, EV, EI, and this will also bend like this, and you know the region because now uh, this your gate side is a positive voltage you are applying. So this this side is gate. Electron energy will reduce because you are applying positive voltage. Electron energy will reduce. So oxide side, this one, and in the, this side previously your metal Fermi level was here. Now you are applying a positive gate voltage, so metal Fermi level energy will reduce. So this one was. EFM, so it will reduce how much times? Q times of Vg. Okay. So this is the energy band diagram under this case. So this case two, we can give one name. This is called depletion. This phenomena is called depletion because we are getting some depletion here. Okay. So which is negative. Okay, the charges are negative here. Whatever the charges are present, they are negative. This. Due to the presence of negative charge, or depletion layer is formed. So this case two is called the depletion. Okay. And we can calculate how much amount of depletion charges are there by using this formula. And phi s, phi s actually, phi s we can say the phi s is the voltage or the potential okay at this energy level. Okay, so this is called phi s. And phi f means the bending. Means uh, if I draw only one line, that I am taking the EI. Or EC, that this is the conduction band energy EC. So this voltage is phi F, and the voltage here that is phi F. Okay. So they are difference. This one is phi F. This one is phi F at this level. They are difference actually phi F minus phi F. The amount of depletion charge that depends upon this. So if your gate voltage is more positive, then of course the bending will be more. So difference between phi F and phi F it will increase. Okay, the difference between phi means because more bending will be there, the phi f will be here in that case. So the difference between phi s and phi f will increase, and you have a more amount of depletion charge. Okay, this. Now, case three, the final one. Vg is greater than zero, large positive value. So now we are applying a gate voltage. Of course, it is greater than zero, and now the gate voltage value somewhat are large. So this is the gate metal or gate region. This is the oxide region, and this one is the p-type silicon. Okay. So this is the body. And this is the gate terminal. So this is VG greater than zero, but large. So as you can expect, what will happen? So we are applying a large positive voltage here. The first one, the first case is due to the presence of this large positive voltage, the free holes present in the p type region, the all holes present in this layer, okay, they will be rippled back and some depletion layer will be there 
Okay. Some depletion layer will be there. That is one thing. So there will be some depletion layer. The first thing. Because ultimately we are applying a positive gate voltage. So similar to case two, you will get a depletion layer. And if you further increase the value of gate voltage, okay, so after some time you will get a maximum depletion layer. Second case, so it's a P-type duct semiconductor. So here electrons are minority carrier. Okay, so here minority carriers are electron. Okay, so here minority carriers are electron. So we can say that very few amount of electrons are present here. Okay, very few amount of electrons are present. And those minority carriers, see, we are applying a positive gate voltage. Those minority carrier electrons are attracted and they are deposited near this. Near this. This blue color. Near the oxide. So here we have two types of charge. One is depletion charge. Another one is this uh, free electrons. They are not fixed. They are free. The minority carrier, only few in nature. Okay, number, but uh, they are free. They are not fixed. Okay, so that and they will create a conducting channel because they are free. Okay, so the name of this layer is called inversion layer. Okay. So the name of this layer, that is the layer formed by the minority carrier electrons. Okay, so it is called inversion layer. Okay, so why we are saying it inversion? So let us take a look. So before that, can you tell me which type of bending will be there? Which type of bending will be there? Anyone? Downward. So downward compared to previous means case two or case three. If you compare, what will happen? Sir, uh, in, in, uh, compared to case two, sir, it will uh, bend more. More downward, yes. So compared yes. to case two, it will bend more downward because now we have more negative charge. Okay, we have more negative charge. So the junction became more in type. Okay, the junction became more in type. So we will see one interesting thing here. Let us. Now I am drawing this diagram a little bit larger. It's semiconductor side. Okay, so those are the different region, the oxide region. This is the metal region. And this is the P-type silicon region. Okay, so this is the valence band, EV. It will be downward bending. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. This is the conduction band. It will be downward bending. And here we have intrinsic level, EI. Here also we have a downward bending, like this. So more downward bending will be there. Okay, so and we are metal side, we are applying some positive gate voltage. So of course, uh, this uh, metal side, what will happen? Their Fermi energy, EFM, metal Fermi energy will reduce by uh, some few times of VC. Okay, and the oxide side, that band will be like this. This side less, this side more. Okay, this. Now, one thing. To understand this mechanism, just see. We have an n-type semiconductor where the conduction band EC is here, valence band EV is here. Oh, sorry, valence band EV is here. Intrinsic level EI and Fermi level. Uh, let's say I'm drawing it in a different color. Fermi level is here. EF, n-type semiconductor. Now we have a p-type semiconductor. We have a conduction band here. We have valence band here. We have intrinsic label here. And we have Fermi label that is near valence band here. Okay, Fermi label that is near valence band. Now check this region. Check this, just focus on this, this side. Here. See here, the EI level, the intrinsic level, above VF level, 
intrinsic level above fermi level now observe this and this so this one is which type of semiconductor compare that check this one and check this one in in this case ei level is above ef so this part is which type of semiconductor we know it is p type from this can we answer See, in this diagram, EI is above EF, EF is here, EI is here, so EI is above EF, so here also EI is above EF, so that is the property of P-type semiconductor, so no doubt it is a P-type semiconductor, but when you are applying sufficiently large positive gate voltage, what will happen, the bending of diagram will take place, okay, and the bending may be like this, okay, bending may be like this, or bending may be like this, more downward bending. If I check this region, this particular region, okay, see, EI value is here, EF value is here. So can I say this is n type semiconductor, P type semiconductor in this region? Check EI, this, this line will bend and finally it will touch here. And EF is constant, it is here. Can I say it is P type? Yes or no? So this one is which type? It will uh, act as n-type semiconductor. So it behaves uh, like yeah. n-type semiconductor because see in n-type semiconductor EF is above EI or EI is below EF. Check here. EI level is below EF. And here we are getting exactly the same phenomena. EI level will bend. Why it will bend? Due to application of positive voltage, get voltage. And now it is below Fermi level. Okay. So one strange thing we can observe here, the semiconductor, we can say, it is this property, it's band diagram. From band diagram point of view, we can say the semiconductor is converted to n-type. Although we are working with p-type semiconductor, but the semiconductor is converted to n-type. Okay. So that's why the name of this layer you are getting, that is called the inversion layer. Okay. See, majority carriers are holes. But the conducting channel in this condition is formed by whom? Minority carrier electrons. So everything is getting inverted, opposite. Okay. Majority carriers are holes. But the conducting layer is formed by the electrons. The name of the layer is called inversion layer. That's why the semiconductor looks like it is inverted. It's n type. Because from this energy band diagram, it looks like n type semiconductor. But actually, it is p type. The band bends in such a way. It looks at that it is as the n-type semiconductor. Okay, just So the band bend in such a way it looks like an n-type semiconductor. So that's why the name is called inversion layer. Okay. So theoretically, let's some more explore on that. Okay. So theoretically. When your let uh, this is the Fermi level EF and this is EI and this is the oxide and I'm just drawing that part only only one energy level EI so EI will bend okay so when the EI is just below EF just below EF, that means uh, like this. So we can say the semiconductor is inverted as per the definition. You got to see the semiconductor is inverted. When EI is just below EF, it is called inverted. So based upon this condition, we have two types of inversion. One is called weak inversion. And second one is called strong inversion. Okay, so when EI is just below EF, when EI is just below EF, okay, so just below, okay, then it is called the weak inversion. But if the situation is like this,
that we are applying a sufficiently high gate voltage and the band will be like this okay and if it satisfies this condition this distance means for p type the distance between i and ef and here the distance is this one okay they are same okay or more than that okay so this one is called strong inversion That means we can say this one is was phi s. Okay. Now this phi s suddenly it became minus of phi s. Okay. So when phi s became minus of phi f, here it was phi s. Okay. And this is phi f. And why it is negative? Because it is below. Okay. Phi s is equal to minus of phi f or the total change. From this point to this point, this is phi f, this is phi f, or total change in phi s, phi s is called surface potential, is equal to minus 2 phi f. Okay, so this total distance from top to bottom. Why it is negative? Because we are moving from top to bottom. Energy reduces. That's why minus sign. Okay. From this to this, from this to this. So this is phi f, this is phi f. So total change is minus of 2 phi f. Then it is called strong inversion. But if it's just a small bending is there, let the bending is like this. Green color, let the bending is like this. Okay, the bending happens, but it's a little bit. Then we cannot say it is strong inversion. It is weak inversion. It is just below. It is just below, but not uh, equals to this one. Then it is called weak inversion. But when it satisfies this condition or the total change in surface potential equal to minus 2 pi f, okay, then it is called strong inversion. So we have two types of inversion. Any question? So if I derive this equation, so what will be the value of QB0 at strong inversion? So just the total change, phi s minus phi f, it will be replaced by how much? Minus of 2 phi f. Okay. So QB0, that is total depletion charge at strong inversion equals to minus of root of 2 q n a epsilon s i minus of 2 phi f. So this will be the change minus of 2 phi f. So we have studied three different cases and that is very, very important because to understand the working mechanism of MOS device, okay, so first we have to know that uh, this MOS capacitor, okay, you need to know the working mechanism of this MOS capacitor. That is very, very important because it's a total operation of MOSFET means how the controlling mechanism of MOSFET is going on. That depends upon this region, the metal oxide semiconductor, this MOS capacitor, get stack. So this is the heart of any MOS transistor. So we have two different sets, three different situations. Okay, so first uh, we have started our analysis from this band diagram. This is the equivalent band diagram. There is a small downward bending due to the work function mismatch and how we can compensate, how we can recover the band diagram from bending. That is flat band condition. We calculate it. Okay, that is called flat band voltage. Then we have three situation. There is now we are going to apply a voltage here. MOS system under external bias. The first one is we are applying a negative voltage. The holes will be deposited, majority carriers, and the layer is called accumulation. Then diagram will be like this. Okay. Second case, we are applying a small positive voltage. Uh, that holes will be repelled back 
because the surface became a little bit positive okay and the holes um, means due to this positive uh, potential okay this uh, due you are applying a positive gate voltage okay the positive gate voltage that is gate electric field will ripple the holes back into the substrate and as a result the negative ions fixed negative ions depletion layers are created and we have a case that energy band diagram will bend a little bit in the downward direction and we can calculate the amount of depletion charge present here by using this formula q b zero this one okay and third case when we are applying a large positive gate voltage there is a strong downward bending will take place okay and now the minority carriers will be deposited near the oxide interface and they create one conducting channel that is called inversion layer so why inversion to understand the inversion mechanism we have drawn two separate diagram just check in this region the ef the ei value intrinsic level above ef so above ef that indicates it is a p type semiconductor but when bending takes place ei is below ef ei is below ef here so that indicates it is a n type semiconductor so we can say the semiconductor present here it is being converted to n type from p type that's why it is called inversion and then we have two types of inversion condition one is weak inversion another one is strong inversion Weak inversion means when I just EI value just cross EF, just below EF, not too much, just below EF, the green color line, you can see here, this one, just below EF. Then it is called weak inversion. Okay, so this one. And when this EI this bending is too much, that means with respect to EF, okay, the bending is equal in both sides, that is phi S equals to minus phi F. A total change this point to this point phi s minus phi f equals to minus of 2 phi f okay then it is called strong inversion in strong inversion the value of depletion charge just in place of phi s minus phi f we can put it is equal to minus of 2 phi f okay. so that's all for today we have discussed so many things but you need to study it so if anyone having any Questions, so please ask. Otherwise, I will finish it.